Hi, I'm Chuck Dorset for Weaver Leather Supply, segment four in our series on stamps. We're going to look at some border stamps. In fact, there are so many that I love. We're going to break this up into two segments. Now, border stamps. We can simply drop these in on a border. They look great, make our project very unique. But also, if we stack these, like we've seen with some other stamps, some very cool things can happen. We're going to take a look at that. All right, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there, going to take you straight to our website. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So we've talked about anchor lines, border lines, casing our leather. Well, you know what? Let's skip that. Let's just go straight to stamping. Let's start with two stamps that I consider very traditional stamps. These are both called serpentine stamps because if we offset these, we're going to get a serpentine design on this. We probably have seen these if we're not familiar with them. The big point with this, we've got to line these up. We have to take our time to line them up, but also the consistency in the stamp head. Now the saddle folks, they can nail it every time. The rest of us, we've got to work at it. But what I've done is I've dropped in a groove line, eighth of an inch in, then I'm going to drop in a guideline an eighth of an inch further or about a quarter inch from our edge. Let's start with a scalloped serpentine. Now it's a lot of stamp here, so we've got to work at getting this consistent. So let's drop that in on our guideline. There we go. Relatively consistent. Now I could go a little bit heavier up here. We can correct that simply by dropping our stamp back in. In fact, I can feel it snap back down in there. Let's work a little bit over that way. There we go. We've got a good consistent stamp. Now our next stamp, I'm going to over stamp just a hair. We don't want a transition line. That's the biggest point, but also we need to make sure we're lined up. There we go. Not bad. I can see a little transition there, but again, the saddle folks nail it every time. I'm going to work this down. Well, there we go. Not bad. Nice border design. Now the tricky part, we're going to offset this. So let's come in right at 5 eighths of an inch or about 1.58 centimeters and let's drop in another guideline. There we go. I'm only going to do half because we're going to spread this out a little bit further. All right. Now I've got to line this up both on my guideline and within this oval. I want that centered. So let's drop that in, do our best to line up. There we go. We're starting to see that serpentine. Let's do a couple more. Okay, there we go. So now we see that serpentine. I could line these up a little bit better, but again, talking and stamping, not, not the best way to go. Let's do this. Let's come out seven eighths of an inch or about 2.22 centimeters. There we go. Basically, we're just spreading this out a little bit, but let's see how this looks. There we go. Now we've got a little bit more of a, of a say, a Victorian look. We're spreading that out. Now, here's one. We're going to see this here several times, but this is pretty cool. Well, that's a pretty cool design. How about we drop a letter stamp right in the middle of that? Very unique design. All right, let's step over to what's called a Serpentine Royal. A lot more detail on this stamp. So let's drop in our guideline. And again, let's take our time on this one. In fact, the more time we take, the better this is going to look. Consistency, again, that's what we're aiming for. Nice, crisp stamp. Let's do a few more. Okay, now we're going to reverse this. We could always drop in a line, but basically what I'm going to do, let's get a good close-up. Notice I've got a point right there. 
I'm going to drop my two edges or the heel of the tool right on the top of the points going that way. I'm going to do my best to drop that point right on the center. Okay, let's do a few more. Now that's a stamp with a lot of detail to it, isn't it? Now I can come back and work on this and make it a little more consistent. If we're in our shop by ourselves, absolutely. Now let's try this with this stamp. Very cool design. We've got two squares. Absolutely, we could do a diamond and a square or right there flat. Let's take this out a little bit more. How cool is that design? I love that. In fact, we'll spread this out with one of the other tools. This makes a cool pattern. Okay, let's step over to what we call a meander stamp. And we've got our groove line. Let's drop in our guideline one quarter of an inch out. Good, and again, we'll over stamp that so we won't see this. So a meander, this has got a bit of a sunburst effect. A lot less metal on this head, so I need to back off on my pressure a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Very crisp, very clean. I can see every detail in that. So let's work our way down just like our serpentine. All right, there we go. Makes kind of a subdued border design. Let's do this. Let's come out three eighths of an inch or about, I think that's about 0.9 centimeters. But really, you can come out any distance, and you'll see why. Okay, let's offset this just like our serpentine. Good. Now we've got this line down the center. Very cool. Now. I'm stamping on camera, and particularly with the serpentine, not as lined up or as consistent as I would like. As I would like on camera, thinking, talking, not the best atmosphere for setting stamps. But nonetheless, what we're doing here, let's just get an idea. Okay, with this, let's do a square. Well, that's a pretty cool design. Let's do one more, or maybe two more. Let's just see how that looks. Well, very cool. That's a unique pattern. How about a triangle? So many ways we can go with a simple stamp if we just sit down and be creative. All right, one of my favorites, the meaner. Let's reset, jump over to some uncommon border stamps. And our guideline, okay? I love this stamp. Now, it makes a cool border stamp, but it also makes a great pattern stamp, and we'll look at that. So let's get a look at this first off. A lot more tools, so we need to work this around to get this consistent. Yeah, there we go. Nice impression. Let's stack the next. Good. Notice we've got a different design emerging. I'm going to do just a few more. Well, that makes a cool border design, but also think maybe a cuff, maybe about a one inch wide cuff. That'd be a nice design there. Here's my favorite thing to do with this. So I'm going to work this out.
How cool is that design? Say a larger project like a briefcase or journal cover or maybe diagonally. Love that design. Again, one of my favorite tools. Okay, let's jump over to just some basic border stamps. Let's start right here. I love this stamp because of the detail. It's got a sunrise effect to it. Look at that. We can see every detail in that stamp head. Let's do a couple more. Nice border design. Again, I love the detail. We have another similar. This is a pebbled border stamp. There we go. That would look good bordering a design. Give it a scalloped look. And one more. Let's drop in a groove and a guide. Now, big stamp here. We've got a lot of metal on this. So let's work this one. There we go. There's our design. Let's stack these. Very cool. And again, an additional design is emerging. That's a big stamp. Now we can always stamp this end to end. But again, like say for a cuff or a belt, that's a cool design. Well, either way, that is nice. I love that. So really, with these stamps, let's pick them up. Let's experiment. Who knows what's going to come out? Well, that's exactly right. Let's pick up a stamp, evidently any stamp, and just experiment. There's no telling where we're going to go. That, to me, is one of my favorite parts of stamping leather. Now, segment five, we're going to look at the other half of our border stamps. We still have some cool designs to look at, but my biggest hope here is that somewhere in this series, you see a stamp that you absolutely fall in love with. To me, that would be the payoff. All right, so I hope this is good information for you. Good luck with your projects. Thank you.